I specifically remember Daniel coming up to me at, at LA and was like, hey Ryan, uh, cool, like, really hope you do well, but uh, also <laughs> hopefully you lose by uh, semifinals or like top eight, so, you know, just to be safe, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> and then I found out later that if you made it to the finals, you were going to the... the you were going to Did he actually say that? Regardless. Yeah, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Daniel's cracking me up, man. He's like, yeah, good luck today, uh, but just don't win because we need you. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm dead, dude. you always have to have that like one shitty job that has you doing way more positions than you should be doing, way more workload, and that you're not getting paid the proper amount because it gives you a level of self-respect and ability that you you wouldn't have otherwise. Elusives and even my original crew, Heaven's Crew, like we've always been on the same tip. It's like, yes, we love breaking and we always focus on breaking, but it's like, yo, we also we also talk about like how to get our life together. Like, yo, here's how you manage your your monthly budget. Like, this is a, a Google spreadsheet that I use to like calculate my expenses. Like, yo, here's like here's the stocks that you should probably invest in. Like, oh. these kind of conversations is like what we'll talk about. It's never strictly breaking. Like, it's it's more than that because crew is like crew is family, and it's like we look out for each other like family. So it's like because we're connected through breaking we'll always talk about that but because we also have like some of the same goals we're all trying to be like elevate to the next level like that's always been the goal people think about flying and, and traveling is so expensive but it's actually like really cheap if you know how to do it like people hate on spirit but spirit can cost you like maybe a hundred dollars to fly to some jam in the middle of nowhere and everybody knows somebody just like we were saying in the film industry everybody like I've gotten all my jobs almost all of my jobs through word of mouth like you can message the event organizer or every b-boy knows a b-boy that knows somebody so it's like oh I'm planning on going here I think such and such might know somebody that goes here and uh, they can hook you up with a place to stay. So it's it's so easy to travel as a b-boy and it's relatively cheap. And if you're only going for a weekend, you only need a backpack so you don't have to pay for bags. So um, yeah, I would say travel more, but obviously be smart about it. Choose which jams you're gonna travel to. I'm curious what your, what you what the value you find in traveling is. The biggest thing about traveling is it reignites your fire. If you've ever noticed the people that stay in one place in battle, there's like, there's so many like unspoken rules and mentalities in breaking. Like one of the things that people do is they're like, oh, I can't leave until I win uh, a jam in my own city or like until I've got this level of respect and, and this kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, you can talk to a lot of b-boys. Like there's, there's so few b-boys that have like made a name for themselves in their city first. Well, I mean, that used to be the case, but like nowadays, usually you go out somewhere else and that's when you really start killing it. And then once you take that step, then you start getting respect from back home. Just the act of traveling, whether or not you make it past prelims, you're already exposing yourself to new worlds yeah. and you're, sh you're seeing that your scene isn't the world, you know? Um, I think that's a really big thing that I struggle with just being able to see the same people over and over again and yeah. just being in the same space, um, it feels kind of limiting in a way. I think it's a mental barrier, but it's also just like, you know, we, we, we associate spaces with our mentalities. And of I'm curious, did, did moving to LA, do you feel like that had um, any influence on your training or your breaking? 100%. Moving to LA made me such a better breaker. You have to travel and meet people and just do things because what people don't see in the grind and like in you going and like at least getting in people's minds to these levels that they want to get to is I've taken L's in more places than people have even been to. Like I've been to more countries and not made it out of like prelims and it's like it's like, you know, people see when I when I win or when I like do decently well, but like people aren't watching you lose. And I'm like lo I'm I'm losing all the time and <laughs> nobody ever has a problem with me when I lose. <laughs> like people only ever have a problem if I win something. But <laughs> the thing is like you you've just got to lose. You have to get so comfortable with losing. Your first power move is like choosing your starter Pokémon. 
it determines like all right oh you're gonna be Whoa. fire type water type like psychic ice like whatever like your first power move does that so like for example my brother and i are similar but even our styles are still different my first power move was crickets and 90s those were the first two and then i just really liked 90 loved doing it and so i threw it in wherever i could versus my brother he was always good at like ground power like windmills munch mills that kind of stuff so like all his floor transitions he's got like good back rock and stuff like that because oh. he's always got that good like that good arch in his back yeah. and just it builds your foundation of how you move do you have a favorite battle and doesn't like, have to be your battle just like oh. in general Yo, no, okay. You always go back to. Physics is one of my favorite b boys of all time. So, like, what is it? Physics versus Lilu, or was it against uh, uh, Kareem? Or, or is it the one where he flips off the stage? Yup. <laughs> Yo, the stack combo on that was crazy. Yes. <laughs> that was that was so nuts, man. Like, the thing is, you look at physics footage, and it's like nobody nobody was touching that kind of stuff and even to this day nobody's doing that kind of stuff even physics can't do that kind of stuff anymore it's like he was ahead of his time so much that he can't even catch up to that time yeah, like man. untouchable he's a relic in time yeah one for the books yeah. most definitely you look back at the footage and you're like oh that last one was kind of good but i want to let me see another one and then you're just done and you're like wait that was the last time I practiced windmills this entire practice. It's like, yo, future you doesn't give a damn about how tired or how bored the past you was. All you care about is like, no, do it again. So then when you're at practice the next time, you're like, man, I'm tired. And it's like, man, but later I'm going to be pissed at this footage when I like see that I was slacking off. So it just makes you want to practice even harder. That's true. You keep yourself accountable. <laughs> future you mm -hmm. keep yourself accountable.